Hello there, this is Alana Tucky, and this is going to be the lecture videos for section 2.2 of Math 133. So now we're going to start talking about quantitative data. And quantitative data is so important to us, we're actually going to spend a couple sections organizing it. So in this section, we're going to um, deal with the basics of organizing it. First thing you got to be able to do is break up quantitative data into classes. So we're going to group data by categories. Um, and of course, because it's quantitative, we can group it in rank order from lowest to highest. The first class will be at the top of the table. The second class is the next row and so on. And each class will get progressively higher Okay, in, val in numerical value, I should say. Now the cumulative frequency is the sum of all frequencies up to and including the current class. And the cumulative relative frequency is the sum of all previous relative frequencies up to and including the current class. You can write those as decimals, fractions, percentages, but of course decimals as before with relative frequency are more useful to us. Now keep in mind that these two cumulative frequency and cumulative relative frequency can only be found for distributions where the classes have an inherent order. So you can't do this with nominal data. This wouldn't work with you know, Medicare expenditure categories. It's just not going to happen. It has to happen where the data has an order, where there's a lowest to a highest. All right, so the following is a frequency distribution for the number of days, pa days patients need to remain in Allegiance Health Hospital after having appendix surgery. So, for example, we had um, three patients that needed to stay two days, nine patients that needed to stay three days, and so on. Okay? So we're going to find the relative frequency, cumulative frequency, and cumulative relative frequency of all of these groups. And we're going to place their values in the chart. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add them up, which I already did. I found the total for this column is 62. Okay? In fact, let me put that in real quick. All right, now I want to find the relative frequency. So the relative frequency is going to be, and we found this before already, 3 divided by 62, which would be, enter. All right, so 0 0.048, okay? And then the next one would be 9 divided by 62, and so on. I'm not going to bother showing all the division. We already know how to do that from a previous section. So let me go find all these values. One sec. There we go. Okay, so 0 0.452, 0 0.274, and 0 0.081. All right, so there they are rounded to three decimal places. All right, now I'm going to find the cumulative frequency. Now, cumulative frequency is the sum of all the pre previous frequencies up to and including the current class which for the first class is just the same number you already had, 3. But now for the next class, it's 12. Now how do I get 12? Well, I'm cumulating. I'm adding up the frequencies. So 3 plus 9 makes 12. The next one's going to be 30 because 3 plus 9 plus 28 makes 30. Oh, 40. My bad. 40. I'm losing my mind. I can't add. There we go. See? 40. The next one's 57. And the next one's 62. Now, how do I get 57? Well, I take 3 plus 9 plus 28 plus 17, and that'll get me 57. And by the end, I should have 62 because that's what I said the sum added up to. And for the record, this should add up to 1. Oops, I just checked. It. There it is. And it added up to 1, so yay, team. If it added up to 0 0.999, though, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It just means that there was a little bit of rounding, or even 1.001. It can happen. Okay. Cumulative relative frequency, well, you do the same thing. You can do it one of two ways. You can add up the relative frequencies. That's one way to go. Or you can just take the cumulative frequency you've already made and divide it by the total of 62. So this would be 3 out of 62, which would be 0 0.048. Same number as right here. No trouble. Now to get this one, you can take 12 out of 62, which would be, I don't know, 12 divided by 62, enter should be 0 0.194. Now notice that would be a little bit different if I added these two numbers up because if I added these two I get 0 0.193 if I'm looking correctly. And that's okay. It, it, what's happening is there's a little bit of rounding over here. You're better off honestly using the whole numbers. It'll keep more accuracy for you but it's not the end of the world if you get a tiny bit off due to rounding. All right so the next one would be 40 out of 62 and then I'm just going to find the rest of these. 
And I don't need to bother with the last one because we should all know what the last one is. It's 1, right? Because 62 divided by 62 makes 1. All right, now what is the second class? The second class is this row right here. So the class itself, these are the class limits over here on the left. So it's three days. Now, how many patients needed to stay two days after surgery? Two days after surgery, that's this. So that's three patients. What percent of patients needed to stay five days after surgery? Percent. Percent is a relative frequency thing, so that would be this group. Here's the five days, so that's 0.274. 27.4%. How many patients stayed three days or less? Well, that's a cumulative thing. So three days or less is right here. Let me highlight it for you, right there. Or you could get it by adding these two up because that's where that number 12 came from in the first place, right? But either way, it's 12 patients. Okay. Now, what percent of patients stayed four days or less? Four days or less is right here. So that's the percentage. If you wanted how many, it would be 40. But if you want the percent, it's 0.645. And you can get it by adding these three, right? If you add those three up together, you should get around 0.645. And there we go. All right, now let's move on to histograms. So histograms look a lot like bar charts. See, there's a histogram. It's going to look like a bar chart, except bar charts are for qualitative data. So if you recall, their bars don't touch. Let me go back to one so you can see it. The bars don't touch. See the gaps, right? See the gaps? And it's this qualitative data down here on the axis. But for a histogram, it's quantitative data, numerical. And it's going to go in order from lowest to highest. You can't rearrange them to make it make you ha make yourself happy like you can with a Pareto chart. So you have to go the same width. Every box has to be the same width, um, and the axes should be labeled. The graph should be two dimensional, just like a bar graph. But it's quantitative data, not qualitative, down here on the horizontal axis. And generally, we don't draw histograms horizontally. We can draw bar charts horizontally, like we did with the Medicare expenses one. Oh, there we go, physical therapist. That's a bar chart. It's horizontal. That's no problem. But in general, histograms, we don't draw horizontally very much. We tend to draw them vertically. All right, so this is um, the number of years of experience each nurse has on an earthquake response team for nurses without borders. So they have... Um, a nursing team, and here are the years of experience. So you can see 15% of the nurses only have two years of experience, and so on. Okay, 1% have 20 years of experience. So is the variable years of experience quantitative or qualitative? That is very much quantitative. That's a number. Okay. All right, is this an example of a frequency histogram or a relative frequency histogram? Well, if you look over here at the vertical axis, that's percent. So that's a relative frequency histogram. Hold on. Because the vertical axis is percent. Okay. Now, if there were 212 nurses on the team, how many of them had two years of experience? All right, so percent with two years was, let's look back here, it's 15%. So how many would be equal to, and you multiply 212 times 0.15. Let me do it this way, 15% times 212, which would be 0 0.15 times 212, which would be, let's grab a calculator, Thirty-two, right? Because you can't have 0.8 of here's 31.8, but you're going to round that to 32. Because it's impossible to have 0.8 of a nurse, right? Either you have the nurse or you do not, because this is discrete, right? If it was continuous, you would be able to have 0.8. That's the big difference between the two. All right, we're done with that problem. Let's move on. 
All right, so I have two graphs here. This is the number of emergency room calls received each night. And this one is um, doctors use electric, uh, electronic patient medical records. So there's the US, what percent of doctors use um, electronic patient medical records? And yes, this is real data. So which graph has a histogram and which graph has a bar chart? So graph number one is a histogram. Graph number two is a bar chart or bar graph, same difference. We call them different names, but or same name or different names, but they mean the same thing. Now, how do I know that? Well, that's because graph number one has quantitative data on the x-axis and the bars touch. Graph number two has qualitative data on the x-axis and the bars do not touch. Done with that. All right, what percentage of doctors in the US use electronic patient medical records? And by the way, yes, this is real. Um, I don't remember what year this was. It was 2000 something. So it looks like, well, I can actually tell what it is. It's 46%, but it's just a little bit over 45 because the middle bar would be 50%. So the one right below it would be 45. So it's about 46%. There we go. All right, we're done with that page. Next, it's going quick. All right, so here we're gonna organize continuous data in a table. So continuous is gonna be different because you're not gonna separate it into such discrete classes. Like this one was two days, three days, four days, five days, that's it. But what if it kind of has a range? So here, um, we have exam grades. So below 39, then 40 to 49, 50 to 59, and so on. So the lowest, the lower class limit is the smallest value within a class. And the large, the upper class limit is the largest value within a class. You um, keep in mind that we round a lot of time, but it means everything up to, but not including the next lower class limit. So it often ends with 0 0.9, 0 0.99, etc. I shouldn't say always rounded, I should say often rounded, sorry. Now the class width is the difference between consecutive lower class limits. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And then an open-ended distribution is when the first class has no lower class limit and or the last class has no upper class limit. All right, so these are um, the percentage grades on the final exam for three sections of Math 131 in fall of, um, 2013 to winter 2014. So you can see that this class is open-ended. See how the first class doesn't have a lower class limit? No lower class limit, see right there? Because you don't know where this ends. It could be somebody at 20, could be somebody at 10, could somebody at 30, you have no idea. But you've got two people there that scored below 39.9. Then you have five people that scored between 40 and 49 and so on. Actually, I'm gonna stop this video right here and I'm gonna pick up with this table in the next video because it's gonna take a few minutes. I'll see you back here in the next video.